It's time for Orchard Skills. The code flow is the most advanced and secure flow in OAuth OpenID Connect. It is also the most flexible that allows a web client to obtain tokens securely. It is split into two parts, the authorization flow, where the client redirects to the server and the server redirects back to the client when done, and the token flow, which is a REST API call from the client to the authorization token endpoint of the server. Today on Orchard Skills, we'll be utilizing the OpenID Connect code flow authorization in Orchard Core. We will use this flow to obtain secure access to the Orchard Core content APIs. With these APIs, we can create an Angular CRUD client application to create, read, update, and delete our custom-defined subscriber content type in the Orchard Core database. Please stay with us and we'll get started. <music> Welcome back. As you can see, by just describing our objective, OAuth OpenID Connect can be a bit intimidating, but by learning the basic terminology and seeing some examples, you can eventually master it. In order to utilize the OpenID Connect server, we'll need to configure it in Orchard Core. I believe the fastest way to accomplish this task is through a recipe. Let's take advantage of the material design theme solution we created in a previous video. With your favorite browser, let's go to github.com slash orchardskills slash orchardskills.orchardcore.materialdesigntheme. Click on the code button and let's go ahead and select open with GitHub desktop and also the button open github desktop.exe and let's hit the clone button. Okay, great. Let's bring up Visual Studio. Okay, let's head over to the material design recipe here. So the first thing we want to add is the GraphQL feature. And next, what we'll want to add is enable the OpenID server, OpenID management, and OpenID verification features. And now let's head down to the end of the file here. And here we want to add the configuration for the OpenID Connect. Add that here. So we want to specify OpenID server settings and test mode enable false access token format, JSON web token. Authority is the location of our server, which is localhost 44307. Enable token endpoint true. Enable authorization endpoint true. Enable logout endpoint true, enable user info endpoint true, allow password flow false, allow client credential flow false, allow authorization code flow true, allow refresh token flow false, allow implicit flow false, allow logout endpoint true, and then we'll specify our authorization endpoint path to be our server slash connect slash authorize, and our logout endpoint path as our local host connect slash logout and our token endpoint path as connect slash token our user info endpoint path as slash connect slash user info and then we want to set up our authorization code flow and we'll name it open id application client id will say code flow client id redirect urls will be localhost 4200 sign in dash callback and that's for the Angular application. And also for the post logout redirect, we want to specify localhost 4200, sign out callback, and then we want to allow authorization code flow to true, allow logout endpoint to true, and then type public. And then for our scope, which is open ID scope, put our description, a scope to provide API for remote clients, display name, API scope, Scope name, API resources, my recipient, and then down here, name, open ID, validation settings, audience, my recipient, and then the authority is our server, localhost 44307. And that's it. That's all you have to do to configure your open ID connect settings in Orchard Core. Next, we'll go ahead and create the Angular application. So let's bring up a command prompt, issue an ng new, and we'll call the application spa for single page application, and we'll specify dash dash routing, dash dash style equals scss, dash dash skip, dash install, dash dash skip, 
dash get dash dash strict equals true. And this will create a very basic Angular application. So now let's go into the spa directory. So we'll do a CD SPA. So we're going to need a OIDC client library. So let's go ahead and install that. And we'll do an npm install OIDC dash client dash dash save. So we're going to need an auth service. So let's go ahead and define that ng generate service. And we'll put it in the services directory and we'll call it auth. Next, we'll create a, an account service. We'll create an auth intercept service. We'll go ahead and create a shared module. In that shared module, we'll generate a navbar component. And we'll generate a component for the sign-in dash callback. And we'll generate a com component for the sign-out dash callback. And so we'll need some models, auth context model. And we'll also need a user's profile model. Okay, and I think that's it. And so now we can just do code dash dot, and that will bring up our Angular application here. So the first thing you want to do is generate your SSL. So go to the SSL directory here, and there's a readme file that talks about how to generate a trusted SSL certificate. And there is a generate.sh file that will run under Linux or and also Mac OS, but there's also a Windows batch file that calls the bash inside of Git and it will call generate.sh and that will generate a server.crt and a server.key. So this is your private and public keys. And so you'll want to install that depending on your operating system. You'll want to put that into your keychain or your SSL certificate area in Linux or in Windows 10. You we want to put it inside your cert manager. So if you want, you can. And then what you want to do is go to your trusted into your certificates, right click and say import. Click on next. Browse to the file location. So that would be in and select that open and hit next. Place certificate in the following store, which is your trusted root certificate authority. Hit next and then finish and then say yes. And that gets imported into your certificate store. And then you want to go to your angular.json file here. And you'll notice here that we have SSL the true, and then we have SSL key, specify your, your key, and then your SSL cert is where you specify your cert. So that's in the subdirectory there. And then you also notice that inside your project.json, we do an npm start, which does an ng serve dash o dash ssl equals true. All right. So then once that's all set up there, what we want to do, I'll show you here is to the source directory here, environments. So environments here, you want to set up your client root, which is your actual Angular application, and then your API root, which is going to be your Orchard Core server, your STS authority, which is your Orchard Core server, and then your client ID, which is code flow client ID, and then you have different credentials you can want to set up. And if we go into our application here, and we go into our different services here, so in the auth service here, you'll notice that we are setting up the authorization service for the HTTP client, and you'll notice that here, the authority is set to the environments that authority, your client ID is set to environment.client ID, redirect URLs is set to sign in that's callback, response type is code, and then your scope is open ID, profile, and API. And then you can set your post logout redirect URI is to the sign out callback. And then your also we can do different settings for that as well. And then your, your logout would be manager sign in redirect. Okay, and so for the nav bar, we just set up a simple nav bar here, basically, and we do a nav bar menu and inside there we have we specify a button for logout or login if we go into the component.cs we're passing in the auth service and basically doing an ng on init is login we get the either login service here so that's kind of important to understand there and then we have our sign in callback here so basically that's just an empty div if we go down here we do the sign in callback component and then we do the 
the auth service complete login then to navigate to there for the sign in callback and then for here the signing sign out callback we do the complete logout here and do a router navigate so in the main application here this is where we we do all of the different activities so here's ng on init where we're getting the auth token this is where we get our subscribers do our rest calls here here's our delete subscriber here's our open edit subscriber here's our close subscriber here's our update and here's our post that we've modified. So this is the update here, and this is where we do an add subscriber. So all of these are down here located. Let's go ahead and do an NPN install the Angular application. Okay, so let's go back to the Orchard Core server application, run this application. So let's click on the green play triangle enter our site and for our recipe let's go ahead and select the material design theme enter our username our email address enter our password and then hit the blue finish setup button okay so you notice here we can go ahead and log in and go to our dashboard if we go to security you'll notice that we have an open id connect now and if we go into settings authorization server we went to management applications you'll notice that we'll have an authorization code flow if we click on that and then you can see here that it's specifying our redirect uris and also our post log at redirect uri here so that's all set up so now let's go back to our angular application and let's do an npm start and that will do an ng serve dash o dash ssl true. And then you can see here that here's our Angular application and it says please log in to enable CRUD operation. So let's go ahead and click on the login button. And you see we get redirected to our server. Let's go ahead and log in. Click on the login, and you'll notice here that we get an authorization prompt here. Do you want to grant authorization code flow access to your data? Scope requested, open ID, profile, and API. And let's go yes. And so now you can see that we're logged in. Let's go ahead and add some subscribers. So let's click on the add button, and let's do and for the address, and click add. And so we've added a subscriber. Let's add another one. So let's click add, and we'll go ahead and add him. Okay, so now let's head over to our application and let's go into our sales, our dashboard. Let's go to our subscribers here and you'll notice that we have Joe Biden and Donald Trump. We have integration into the APIs. So isn't that select? So we can go ahead and delete Donald Trump and we'll go back into and refresh here. And you'll notice that Donald Trump has been deleted. So there you go. And not to take any sides, let's go ahead and delete Joe Biden from the server side. So let's go ahead and do select him and go actions and hit delete and confirm the delete. And let's go back to the application and let's go ahead and refresh and Joe Biden's gone. So isn't that awesome? Now to recap, we cloned the material design theme solution from a previous video, configured the server open ID connect for code flow authorization in the Orchard Core CMS application, created an Angular client application using the OIDC client and also configured it for client code flow authorization. Using the Angular client to log in, we were redirected to the server. We selected yes to confirm authorization to access to the Orchard Core APIs. Once logged in and authenticated, we were redirected back to the Angular client application. The Angular client application showed the authorized logged in status, we were able to perform CRUD, create, read, update, and delete operations on a custom content type subscriber. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon.
Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.